Hello and welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. On today's program, we will get an update on what's going on at the Quincy Animal Shelter. Lauren Grenier will be joining us shortly. First, though, we take a look at the weather and the news for you. Currently in Quincy, got a break in the action right now. A little bit of drizzle and mist out there. It's 36 degrees, but we do have some wet snow moving in this afternoon. Could accumulate a couple three inches by this evening. It'll be that heavy, wet, pasty snow. Temperatures remaining in the upper 30s dropping off to the upper 20s this evening as the uh, precipitation comes to an end. Nice day tomorrow. We'll have some sunshine through the clouds with highs in the low 40s. Another messy day here on Wednesday with some snow and mixed precipitation. Highs Wednesday into the mid 30s. And look at the temperatures on Thursday. We'll have some rain in the morning, but temperatures on Thursday could reach 50 degrees. Again, right now, kind of damp and 36 degrees in Quincy. Checking news for you today, the city of Quincy has recently purchased a building to be used for people in substance use recovery. Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch explains the city recently used federal pandemic relief money to purchase the one-story brick building on the McGrath Highway adjacent to the Quincy Courthouse from the McIntyre Family Trust Fund. During the last couple of years of the pandemic, a lot of folks that struggle with addiction, that struggle with alcohol, they had places they used to go to meet, AA meetings, other types of meetings, Al-Anon meetings, whether the meeting may be, yeah. and they were thrown out of a lot of places. And 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 I understand, yeah. you know, with the pandemic, nobody knew what that was going on, and everyone's very concerned. So the typical meeting places um, they were they were barred from. So the the various organizations and groups, and particularly the individuals that need that meeting uh, environment to help them sustain uh, on the road to recovery, they lost out. So. Under the APRA money, we're, this is something that qualifies. So we're going to be probably partnering with an organization like the Gavin Foundation. The city would own the building, but we'd have open it up to that organization to then to schedule it for regular meetings. That's all it would be used for. This isn't an overnight stay. This is not a detox. This is purely for meetings, people coming and going to sustain their recovery. And I look forward to getting it up and running. City purchased that building for $1.8 million back on December 29th. It's assessed for just over $772,000. Mayor says the building was previously used by law offices. He says the state had considered buying that property, but then withdrew their offer. The McIntyre family had owned it since 1969. A Superior Court judge has ruled that the city of Quincy does not own the land occupied by the Adams Academy on Adams Street in Quincy Center. In a recent ruling, the court sided with the Woodward School in ruling that a trust fund established by President John Adams back in 1822 owns the land and the school is the beneficiary of that trust fund. Almost two years ago, the city council did approve $9 million to take the property and the adjacent properties by eminent domain. The city says John Adams deeded the property to the city, but the trust says an earlier court ruling puts the property under the Woodward School's control. The city previously paid the school $2.3 million after a judge ruled that the city wasn't charging fair market value in its lease with the Quincy Historical Society. Mayor Thomas Cope says the city will appeal this latest ruling, and he says the city may have to pay the trust fund if it loses its appeal, but he says it will not relinquish control of the Adams Academy. Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch is asking the city council to approve 15 different locations where solar electric panels may be installed. At the last city council meeting, the administration identified some many school buildings, the DPW garage, some city parking lots, even the new animal shelter location on Quarry Street as possible sites for solar panels. Chris Walker from the mayor's office says the proposal doesn't mean the city will actually move forward with that project. Solar panels on available city property, it doesn't say we may not do it at the dog park uh, or the dog shelter. Um, this just creates the opportunity for us to make the public space available. What, hap what will happen is we'll issue the RFP, a company will come back or multiple companies will come back with a proposal and then we'll pick and choose where we want to put them. So. Uh, to the council's point, there's going to be plenty of time to discussion on uh, where these uh, arrays will be going and, and what needs to happen for the arrays to go certain places. Proposal was placed into the City Council's Ordinance Committee for further review. 
Members of the Quincy Teachers Union are optimistic that agreement can be reached on a new contract soon. At the most recent school committee meeting, three union members said they were pleased that contract negotiations are resuming this month. Point Webster middle school teacher Jacqueline Principe said the union and the city are getting close to a settlement. Good evening, my name is Jackie Principe. Um, I live at 166 Clinton Road in Weymouth and I am the eighth grade social studies teacher at Point Webster Middle School. As a member of the QEA, I am here on behalf of my colleagues to thank the school committee for returning to the table with our bargaining team. As QEA members, we are hopeful that the committee will recognize the significant movement made by our team in our last set of proposals, and we are optimistic that we will be able to reach a settlement soon. We look forward to the outcome of our next bargaining session. Thank you all. Quincy teachers' contract expired at the end of August, and teachers and parents have been rallying outside the school administration building recently, calling for fair negotiations. The unions requesting better parental leave policies, caseload caps for special education teachers, and changes to pay structure. Mayor Thomas Koch said teachers are being offered 3% annual increases for three years. Uh, high school students here in Quincy will have to keep their personal electronic devices turned off and put away during class time. The school committee recently approved of that ban on cell phones and other devices at both high schools. It's similar to a ban already existing at the elementary and middle school level. Devices could be used in between classes or during lunch. School committee member Emily Lebo says there's overwhelming support for the ban that I've heard from several high school teachers that they feel like they have their school back at both high schools this year because the policy is in place. So um, and this is communication directly with teachers at, at citywide events. So um, and not only did the principals tell us that they wanted this, um, but I personally have heard from lots of people that I know that they really want this policy in place and that things have changed for the better in their buildings since the policy has been there. And kids have told me that too, actually. Committeeman Doug Guttrow opposed the ban, saying it may put teachers at risk of a confrontation with students and that it doesn't allow flexibility if a device is needed as a teaching tool. The violations of the ban would result in a device being held until the end of the day, all the way up to permanent banning a student from having a cell phone in school and even possible suspension. It's our check of news today. Coming up, we sit down with Lauren Grenier from the Quincy Animal Shelter for an update. That's next. Welcome back. We're happy to welcome back to the program folks from the Quincy Animal Shelter today to bring us an update on how things are going in their new temporary home and what they have planned for the new year. So that would be Lauren Grenier's job. Happy New Year, Lauren. Happy New Year, Joe. Yeah, Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure to have folks from the shelter. Sometimes we never know if they're going to bring furry friends with them, so not this time. Not this time, yeah. but hopefully in the future. Absolutely, yeah, we look forward <laughs> to that for sure. Uh, as I mentioned, you're in your new temporary home now, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. It's uh, on East Quantum Streets, mm -hmm. in, the, in the rear. In the rear. Yeah. It's um, it's a great location. We've been getting lots of positive reviews but from all of our volunteers and those who have been visiting us at the shelter. Yep. It's definitely night and day from where we were, but um, obviously looking forward to also the new shelter to come. Right. When did you kind of get completely settled in to your new spot? Maybe right before the holidays okay. we got settled in. Yep. Um, it, it took a lot of work. We had a lot of people volunteer their hours even to help put a few um, items together on the outside, um, coordinating our kennels and the outside cages, etc. So it took a, a lot of hands, but we were very happy and excited to yeah. finally be settled in and everyone's happy. For folks who don't know, let's give them a little uh, picture of where you exactly are and how you get there. So um, when you're coming towards like Marina Bay yep. area, you're going to be taking that first left and you're going to, it's right down the road and you're going to be passing like an automotive building. Yep. And when you take another left, that's just right, um, right there. The whole building's ours for, for all of, a lot more room for cats and dogs yep. too, which is nice two separate areas at the shelter for the cats and dogs. Yes. Because at the previous shelter, it was all in one room. 
So it caused a little bit more stress around the animals, and that's something that we're very much also looking forward to in the new shelter where there will be separate spaces. But exactly. so this is a yeah. good little testing environment, especially for our volunteers. Uh, we have about a ho uh, over 150 right now that are helping out and it's been really busy. I'm sure, <laughs> I am sure, yeah. Well, moving, anybody who's moved knows oh, <laughs> well, yeah. how hectic 100%. that can be. <laughs> you know, you're not, not only uh, stuff, but here you're moving live animals at the same time. Yeah, yes, so. and, and we had a crazy year, in fact, um, just some numbers yeah. to break out. Um, to compare, I guess, in 2021, we had 275 cats and 20 dogs. And last year, we had 212 cats and now 47 dogs. Wow. And that's a huge intake of dogs that we have seen from years past. And a little bit of a drop in cats, but I think that had to do with not having so much of a busy kitten season, oh. which usually happens like it will hopefully you know, coming up, up in the upcoming spring. in the spring. Yeah. Um, and then with the move in the, in the relocation, we had to put a halt on a few of our adoption um, intakes. Okay. So I know the foster families were a huge help, right? Oh so my gosh. Yes, to be able to take care of them. Yeah. 100%. Um, in fact, we have over 40 cats in foster care wow. right now. Yeah. And so it's, we, we never, you forget sometimes about the foster families um, because they're not always in the shelter right. per se. But yeah to take in as many cats as we're getting. It's a lot to do. Yeah. For what, sure. Can you attribute the increase in dogs to anything in particular? Was it the economy? Uh, do you no, know? not no? really. Okay. I think there was a lot, you know, reporting with COVID. Yep. A lot of people were, you know, getting dogs. Okay. And because um, everyone was staying at home and it was great. It was especially if you're, you were rescuing. Yes. And now, not that I personally understand, but just from reading other articles contributing that they have to end up surrendering them for one reason or another and a lot of back to work. Okay. So oh, right. we kind of had, I mean, I knew I, I had a feeling that that was probably going to happen, yeah. but <laughs> it's yeah. unfortunate. But, um, you know, one of the, we had actually a great success story ending 2022. Yes, you did. Tell uh, us about Hayes. Yes, Hayes. Yeah. He's a 14 year old um, pit bull mix yep. and he was up up north in Lawrence, so found his way into the Quincy area, if you can believe that type of trek. It's I don't incredible. know. incredible, <laughs> yeah. And uh, he came to us. We actually thought he was a little bit younger when he arrived at the shelter. And um, we actually had Missing Dogs Massachusetts. They're their own nonprofit as well who help uh, report dogs who are missing across the state. Mm. And Hayes was one of the dogs, and we were able to reunite the owner all the way from Lawrence. It's amazing, yeah. We have the most heartwarming video. <laughs> uh, we were so excited that um, we were able to, you know, rescue, share, and and you know, take care of, of him as long as we could. He was so. missing for quite a while, right? A few months. Yeah. Yes, for months, yeah. which is why you know, just being able to reunite the owner was like, oh my goodness, I can't believe like yeah. you found him. So. Yeah, check that we have the video on TikTok and on our Facebook um, and on our YouTube page too. Yeah, I know. You want to check it out. The local news <laughs> even picked it up. It was, you know, one of those kind yeah. of heartwarming uh, human interest stories. Mm -hmm. and it was great around the holidays too at the same time. It couldn't have happened at a more perfect time. Yeah. And I think after the year that we've had, you know, coming back from COVID, moving into the shelter, yeah. um, you know, it was nice for the volunteers and the community to really see, the, you know, a pet and its owner reunite after all these months. Absolutely. I'm just, I can't believe from Lawrence to Quincy, <laughs> this dog found its way and then we were able to bring him home. It was so. meant to be. It was meant to be. <laughs> I know because of the move, as you mentioned, you had to kind of put um, a hiatus on adoptions. Mm -hmm. You also couldn't do many fundraisers, right? No, yeah. not really. And, you know, I think we're going to be starting to do a little bit more this year. Okay. In fact, we have one coming up for um, St. Patrick's Day. Yep. But let's let's play on the pun. St. Patrick's Day. Of course. Uh, yes. Which will be an open house at the shelter, okay. the new temporary shelter yep. on March 18th. So hopefully we're going to do some more fundraising to make up for, you know, what's been a little bit difficult during the COVID seasons. Right. And we'll be updating you for sure with okay. all that information. Okay. One other great way uh, to raise some funds. You're still mm -hmm. selling the uh, 2023 calendars, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So this was our second year 
doing the 2023 calendar. Um, we, have a, we have a new graphic designer who's been helping us these past few years and another uh, volunteer who's been really navigating the fundraising itself and donation of pictures. Mm -hmm. So we have calendars available. Okay. They're available online at our quincyanimalshelter.org. And then we have some also in the shelter, too. Oh, okay. So, Very good. Yeah. So folks are seeing uh, pictures of some of the, the prize pets. How did you figure out which ones to put in the calendar, Lauren? Well, so this year, we actually... Uh, we didn't do a voting. Oh. Last year we did a voting, um, and we we got so many beautiful pictures yeah. and a lot of uh, a lot of owners shared in, like in memory of. Oh, and that, I see. That okay. means that means a lot. Sorry, just touched like um, that meant a lot to us too. So this year we decided everyone, and that's I think how we're going to probably be doing it moving forward. Okay. So everyone has a spot on the calendar throughout the month. Uh, yeah, it's so great. There's my dog Gigi on the bottom. Yep. <laughs> see, this is what people are going to want to yeah, do. Exactly. See their pets and, in print. Yeah. And it's so great. We act, you know, we made a lot of money. Uh, we raised a lot of money, yeah. excuse me, for the shelter from doing this. And, um, you know, we want to make sure we continue it. This used to be done years ago in the beginning uh, with the animal shelter mm -hmm. so oh, really? you know, okay. yeah i think they used to do it with the firefighters believe it or not would do it with the pets so ah. look out we might be coming <laughs> for you guys uh our police and fire department for next year okay all right <laughs> all right so the shelter yeah, celebrated time. what 25th anniversary not our 20th, 20th 20th anniversary okay. yes uh, it was last year yeah and so now um we're just celebrating like i said the new shelter mm. yeah <laughs> and uh and coming from that. Well, I think you're going to be in the quote unquote temporary shelter for, for a, little bit. a little bit. Yeah. And it's, that's, and that's fine. I mean, yeah. we just moved too. So yeah. it's like, okay, settle in and then prepare. But we're very much looking forward to, to what that new shelter will be. Up on Quarry Street. Up yeah. on Quarry Street. Yeah. Uh, but from all accounts, this temporary home mm -hmm. is miles better than where you were on Broad Street, right? Breath of fresh air, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yep. It's been great. Definitely. Speaking to Kit, uh, Kit Burke, the director, mm -hmm. you know, sh she's, she mentioned the fact that, yes, the separation between dogs and cats mm -hmm. is huge, mm -hmm. but also just um, nice amenities for the volunteers. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, with the little, little kitchen space. Right, yeah. Um, a nice entryway for even our guests to welcome, as we welcome them into right. the shelter. It's just, a, a, it, the flow of it is a lot more welcoming, and it brings, you know, happiness to those who are visiting, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. instead of, you know, maybe walking away going, oh. This is sad. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, it's a more comfortable, I mean, there's, there's more parking. The more which parking. Is, which is nice. Yeah, 100%. Um, your, the Kennedy Center is your neighbor, right? So you yes. have folks that can visit there and then just walk over and yeah, one, visit to the shelter as well. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah and Marina Bay too, right, right down the street. And, right. you know, they have lots of activities down at the Marina Bay yep. that Quincy Animal Shelter is sometimes a part of. So, you know, it's a really great community down there too. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. Um, so adoption hours, uh, Lauren, what are those right now? They're the same. Uh, we have Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Okay. Mm -hmm. And any chance maybe expanding that, or can you set up a private appointment if, if that doesn't work for folks? If you want to, you just reach out to our adoptions at quincyanimalshelter.org okay. to coordinate whatever interest you have in an animal that might be available for adoption. All right, mm -hmm. and you'll make some arrangements. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Um, you're hiring. We are. Yeah, you have some yes. openings. We have two openings, and if you don't mind, I'm going to actually read them off. Yeah, go right ahead. Um, med medical care manager okay. is one of them. They're primarily responsible for the coordination, scheduling, and oversight of all medical care provided to every animal while in the shelter's yep. care. And then the second one is in the intake and adoption manager, and that's primarily responsible for the coordination, scheduling, and oversight of all animal intakes, which are strays, surrenders, ACO, and outside agency transfers, as well as screening, appro approving, and all processes and procedures involved with the animal adoptions. Okay. So it's very responsible uh, jobs. Two big, very big. much needed positions yep. at the shelter. Um, we have been, these have probably have been opened for a few weeks now. Okay. Just, you know, looking for the best qualified and any information that 
if anyone's interested in submitting their resume, can be found also online All right. um, at QuincyAnimalShelter.org. Okay, these are uh, paid positions. These are paid positions, right, yeah. yep, and all that information would be online. Yeah. Okay, and perhaps full-time, part-time, it all depends, I suppose, on yeah. the individual. Yeah, yeah. I think we're going to, um, when you email our president yep. uh, with the resume information, we'll be able to send more details around. Okay, good Definitely to. needed positions, valued positions sure. in the shelter. So okay. looking to fill. Um, the Betty White Challenge mm. is coming back. Who doesn't love the Golden Girl? Right. R.I.P. Yeah, um, I know. You know, she was such an animal advocate. And last year, unfortunately, when we lost her, uh, there was a rising and an awareness around what she was doing with animals. And one of the things that came out of that in our social digital world mm. was hashtag the Betty White Challenge. And, you know, Quincy Animal Shelter, we participated into that fundraiser to raise money, and we actually raised $18,000. It's incredible. Incredible. Yeah. And, you know, it was only probably for a few weeks that the um, the hashtag, you know, was trending, and we were able to raise money, and that's an, it's unreal. 18000 Can't believe it. So right. it's going to be coming up again this year. Okay. You know, we were hoping that it, the hashtag would become an annual um, recognition for Betty White and then also help. Um, shelters and any other type of humane society out there. Yes. So we are planning to promote the same. Okay. I would l hopefully, you know, we would like to hit a goal of 20,000. I think that's doable. I think so too, yeah. given, uh, given what happened uh, last year. Yep. So uh, you'll be seeing all of that type of hashtag on our social media, okay. which Quincy Animal Shelter is on um, Twitter. Facebook is our biggest platform that we use, yep. and we have Instagram. In fact, we have a new Instagram account that I want to share. It's at Quincy Animal Shelter MA. So uh, start following that account, Kay. and then um, and then I think and we have TikTok, okay. which is videos oh. too. So we'll be promoting our our Betty White challenge through all of those uh, social media platforms. Uh, who doesn't sure. like eight second videos of cute animals? I right? know, seriously. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's All right. Trending. <laughs> when does the Betty White uh, challenge uh, in begin? a few weeks? It's in oh, okay. February. Okay. It's in, but we'll be promoting it just okay. so we can start generating interest and okay. um, donations can be made through Facebook as well as on our website. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, one place donations cannot be made anymore is Amazon Smile, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Amazon Smile just announced that as of February twentieth, they are going to be concluding their program, which. You know, is a really big blow mm. for um, for the smaller uh, charitable like organizations such as Quincy Animal Shelter. Right. So yeah. we saw over the years uh, ten thousand dollars being wow. donated. So we need to figure out a different you know avenue mm -hmm. and ways to to raise money. With that, we do have a Chewy profile online that a lot of people can check out our wish list, okay. you know, things that are needed at the shelter. Uh, we, like in the past, we've needed friskies for our cats, so we'll put that out there. Okay. Donations of gift cards are also acceptable because then that gives our team and volunteers the right to choose and pick what food might be needed, like dry dog food. Yes. And um, yeah, and Chewy's, they've been really supportive as well. And okay. like donations, again, through the website, but Amazon Smile would be, I know I had it, so right. I would always, you know, the closest, even 10 cents, it, mm -hmm. it made a difference and it all went to the shelter. Yeah. So. Well, that's really important to point out. Um, you don't get any city funding. You don't, no. I mean, the only funding is through donations. Mm -hmm. There's only, I mean, a couple of small salaried positions, mm -hmm. You're volunteer based. Um, so every donation goes to where it's needed, to the animal's care. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it was great. I mean, there, the organization that Amazon Smile was able to do was was tremendous mm. for, for as long as they were able to do it because it started back in 2013 right. for them. So, you know, taking advantage of that was great, but hopefully, you know, there's another type of way that we can make and ends meet on that you know, on that accord. Absolutely. Um, can we talk a bit about the adoption process, Lauren, and how that works? You know, yeah, no, absolutely. Yep, has so, interest. Yeah, so like we mentioned, so Saturday, um, Saturdays of the day you can come in. Uh, we try and post our pictures also um, of our available dogs and cats that we have at the shelter. And we have, um, you, you know, you show up when 
you can make an appointment beforehand okay. if there's an interest, but you can also come visit our shelter um, and then meet the team mm -hmm. and get to, you know, meet the animals and get some information from them. But you work stri like strictly with our adoptions team, which okay. is separate from just, you know, a lot of the volunteers who might just be dog walkers and gotcha. such. So. Okay. Uh, there's always someone to greet you at the animal shelter. So if you do show up, um, you'll you'd be assisted right away. So okay. you can find out more about the about the animal. But okay. Like I said, Facebook is one of our biggest platforms where we host a lot of our information about our pets with the videos yes. and such. Yeah. So yeah, we have a huge thank you Facebook following. We we have a huge community there. Um, we try to respond as timely as possible to any messages that come through. Okay, good mm -hmm. to know. Uh, do you need volunteers? Are there any volunteer Always opportunities? Always need volunteers, okay. All right. 100%. Okay. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we have over 150 right now. And you know, I think with COVID and what happened with COVID, a lot of us had to like take a step back yep. um, and kind of reassess where we're going. But always looking for volunteers and we have um, you know dog walking we have, we can have we have cat care uh, just helping in general with mm -hmm. the, some administrative work mm -hmm. like that would be huge okay. so yeah when always looking and you can reach out to volunteer at quinzyanimalshelter.org if mm -hmm. there's interest I wish you another great mm -hmm. successful year at the shelter yes Thank you so much. Good luck on <laughs> St. Patrick's Day. St. Pod, yes. Come, I know. I'm excited for that. I'm, I'm, I'm an Irish girl myself, so there I feel like that's my holiday. I'll thrive. <laughs> uh, and the Betty White Challenge and the calendars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. absolutely. So we have a few ways of, of raising some money in the next few weeks, but hopefully, um, like I mentioned, we'll have some more fundraising in the next few months that we can talk about the next time we meet or, in, you know, do some you know, adoption spotlights, maybe? Yes, yes. <laughs> we need a little fur flying around here in the studio. <laughs> yeah, <line>. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming over. Appreciate it. I appreciate it, Joe. Thank You're you welcome. so much. Our pleasure. <laughs> Take a look at the forecast for you for the rest of the day. Today, we've got a little wet snow moving in this afternoon. A couple, three inches possible by this evening. Temperatures hovering in the mid to upper 30s. We get a break tomorrow with some sun and clouds, low 40s. More messy weather here on Wednesday. And then really warming up on Thursday, 50 degrees with some rain. Thanks again to Lauren Grenier for joining us today from the Quincy Animal Shelter. Thank you. Thanks to our crew. Thank you for watching Friday here on the program. It's uh, Philip Chong from Quincy Asian Resources because the Lunar New Year celebration is coming up in Quincy very soon. Don't forget our website is available anytime. It's QATV.org. All our latest programs are there. There's news and information, video on demand, live streaming, and much more. For all of us here at QATV, I'm Joe Catalano. Have a great week.